If you're someone who's making slow progress in the gym and constantly worrying about it, by the end of this video, that will no longer be a concern. Let me first bring to your attention that slow progress is significantly better than no progress. Just think about it. You got lifters out there have been plateaued for months and even years in some cases. The fact that you're not going through that is an excellent sign. Sure, the gains could be quicker, but let's keep it real. Most of us go through some training periods where gains are a bit slower. That's when we dial things in. That's when we start asking the why or actually being realistic about our situation. Instead of stressing about fast versus slow progress, consider the concept of consistent progress because this is really what's going to matter in the long run. I'd much rather your gains be slow and trackable than super fast in one shot and then boom, biggest plateau of your entire life. Which is all too common by the way, I often get questions on muscle and strength stalls, sometimes even regression. And I can guarantee you that these lifters would love to be in your position, making gains to a certain extent. You're inducing progressive overload, you're looking in the mirror, physical changes are taking place. That's not bad at all, man. Maybe you just gotta count your blessings. Take what you can get and keep moving forward. That said, if this still isn't enough for you, let me ask another question. Are you actually making slow progress? Or do you falsely believe that to be the case? Because let me say this, the natural journey is by default a slow experience. So what I'm saying is, there's probably nothing wrong with you. Reason why you're stressing all the time is very simple. You are comparing yourself to other men on this platform. You're looking at the genetic freaks. You're looking at the fake natties. You're looking at the best of the best. What do you think happens when you see people are doing so much better than you by comparison? You start to think that your gains are slow when the truth is they could be normal at least when compared to the average population or normal for you because that's the only thing that matters. Stop worrying about other men. They are of zero concern to you. You can look at them for inspiration, for some obtainable strength standards, especially if they got a similar build to you. But to compare physique progress is a complete waste of time. What you need to do is take before and after pictures of yourself. Film your own workouts. Bring your own logs to the gym and see how the progression is going on over time. Doing this will lift the biggest weight off your shoulders and eliminate that ego component. Now you can accurately assess what's going on. You look at those numbers and the trends and patterns become extremely apparent. You start to really understand your own body and know that in many cases, these numbers which may appear small are average little PRs that are adding up. And the fact that you're not quitting, you're staying on your grind, you know what you're working with, you're owning up to it, is all that matters. So I want you to really think about those two points because now I'm gonna dive more into the why aspect itself. Identify your experience level. This is one of the greatest factors which will determine progression over time. You see, a lot of you are starting to become intermediate lifters. You're finally getting out of that novice phase and consequently, results are slowing down. You may think that this is off because you're so used to getting frequent PRs on a workout to workout basis, whether it be rep increases or massive weight jumps. It's always been a certain way and now that world is starting to be crushed. You're seeing what happens as you acquire more lifting experience. And you might be questioning your program, you might be questioning yourself, but really, it's just the way it is. There's something you should know. The novice phase was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's insane that guys can take a 45 pound empty bar squat to over two plates for reps in a few months of training. But guess what, it happens all the time. You will not see that level of progression when you're squatting 400 pounds or benching in the twos. Each year, the progression gets slower and slower, as does the muscle gain. Your first one, two years, that's when most of the progress occurs. After that, it just gets slower and slower to the point where you're only gaining two to three pounds of muscle a year, and then it becomes one, two pounds of muscle. Then it becomes to the point where you barely even see physical changes. It might even be the illusion of a plateau when now we're talking about really slow progress. But if you're anything but elite, you're probably still okay. So training experience matters. There's two real concerns. One is your classification, which will affect absolute progress. And secondly, is how you customize your training according to that zone. What got you to a 315 bench is not what's going to get you to a 405 bench. What got you to a 500 pound deadlift 
is not what's gonna get you to a 600 pound deadlift. Maybe in some minimalist cases, you can say that, yeah, it will be the same journey, but most of us will not go through that. The exercise will be a bit different. You might have different muscular weaknesses, perhaps, the volume of your program will be adjusted, the frequency, the template itself, maybe you're doing full body for five years and now you're gonna switch it up or lower. There could be so many different factors. Perhaps you're experimenting with accommodating resistance now or you're doing the max effort method. Maybe you were always trained that way but just the exercise selection has been tweaked. There are too many things for me to discuss and that's not what I'm trying to talk about in today's video. All I'm saying is that your workouts will likely reflect your experience level in terms of progression and what you're gonna be doing. And that varies for every single person. That's why if you look at some serious lifters who've been in this game for 10 years, you'll see that they ran various programs throughout their lifting career. This is the norm because you're constantly adjusting the variables. In 2018, I absolutely loved the dead bench. It was one of my favorite exercises. I got so much stronger at it. But at some point, my weak points became my strong points. And that's when I had to switch things up. I started doing more floor press, Swiss bar work, chains as opposed to bands. I calibrated according to what I was currently experiencing and I got better gains for it. So I want you to understand that some of the best programs ever written may not be appropriate for you right now because it doesn't match the training experience. And it can go the other way too in the sense that if you're running a novice program and you're no longer a novice lifter, you're going to be stalling left and right or making super slow progress. So it's all about calibrating according to the individual. Once you solve that little dilemma, the gains tend to return at the normal pace that I was discussing previously. Anyway, enough about that. Now I wanna cover nutrition very briefly, which is definitely connected to this topic. Let me first say that you can run the best program in the world. If your diet is unoptimized, you'll either fail or make slower progress than normal. This is often what we see with guys that are trying to maintain super ripped abs year round. Not saying you can't do this. In fact, there are some excellent guides right here on YouTube that teach you how to do this. Just to make sure that your calorie deficit is consistent, not too excessive, and of course, protein intake is adequate. But of course, a lot of guys don't know how to properly do this, and this is why we see permabulkers getting amazing results. They don't have to worry about the diet aspect. They're just enjoying their life, and now the program becomes the one thing that they're truly accountable for, in addition to training really hard in the gym. So what I'm saying is, Diet matters a lot. And although you might have gotten away with an inferior approach before, know that this might be slowing things down. Sometimes guys will send me their program and I'm looking at it like, what? How are you not making gains from this? This is really good. It's addressing all your weaknesses. The progression model is excellent. In many cases, they're running a time-proven system. So that tells me right off the bat that their nutrition or the sleep aspect is not being properly addressed, or they're overreached, or what they're running is not appropriate for the experience level. But more often than not, it has to do with the diet. Because everyone thinks that they're eating right. I was like that too back in the day. Trust me, I had a massive ego. But once I started learning more about nutritional science, it humbled me real fast. I realized I didn't know <laughs> Let's say you were running a program that estimated a 15 pound PR by the end of it. But with the wrong diet, you might only get a five pound PR. And guess what? That is not unrealistic. It happens all the time from guys who are not eating the way they're supposed to. That's why my top recommendation today is to accurately track. Know for a 100% fact that you're not screwing up. Use chronometer, use my fitness pal if you have to. Track your calories, track your protein. Look at your vitamins and minerals. Make sure that every aspect has been addressed. Because if it ain't, you're missing out on one of the biggest elements of recovery, which is when you actually develop. Let me also say that the more aggressive the program is, the more attention you need to pay to diet. Otherwise, you simply won't recover from the sessions. It's going to bury you to the ground. Pay attention to those routines that have you doing high frequency, high volume. Those are your biggest culprits. So what I'm saying is, if you can't match the training with the diet you're probably going to fail or experience a slowdown of gains when it didn't have to be that way. So even though a system could already result in somewhat slow gains, they need not be slower. This is often the elephant in the room. Some guys got away with poor nutrition and they were able to overcome it with hard work and running a good program. But at some point, it wasn't working quite the same. And I'm telling you, if you address this very quickly, you'll start to see things turning for the better. With that said, those are pretty much the major points that I want to touch on in today's video. A bonus thing that I could say is that you really shouldn't stress about things you can't control. 
honestly, it comes down to trusting the process. And if you want, I got another video called you will get jacked, which gives you some more motivation about this. But at the end of the day, if you know you're doing things right, then that's simply how things are supposed to be. This is the natural progression. It is what it is. And to worry about something so much when it really isn't a problem is not doing you any favors. So it goes back to being realistic and owning your situation. That's all I could say, man. Let me know if you have additional ideas you'd like to share. I'd love to see in the comment section. And please let me know if this video was helpful. So keep training hard. Keep doing your best. Honestly, you freaking got this.